Hey friends, welcome to the Johnson City Living Podcast, where we learn about the people, places, events, and flavors that make Johnson City just a lovely place to live. I'm your host, Colin Johnson, with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. If you're interested in buying or selling a home in the area, or if you're looking at investing in a rental property, give us a call at 423-930-8003, and we will look forward to helping you. Now, let's get to today's episode. It's warm. It's not raining currently. It did this morning. The flowers are blooming. The pollen is rocking. It is spring full bloom. And I'm excited to bring my friend in. So you guys get to meet her, Miss Natalie Pickering. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Absolutely. And you are like a semi-celebrity. You do podcasts, (laughs) you do TV shows, you do all kinds of stuff all the time. So you're going to be used to this format. Some people aren't, but you are on top of it. So I'm excited to learn all about your business, but I'm excited for our listeners to get to know you. Yeah. Because you're just a, you're a gem in our area and we're, thank thank you. you for coming in. All right, Johnson City Living Podcast, what is the first and what's your favorite thing about Johnson City? Mm, Favorite. I bet everybody says the mountains. That Uh, is, that's number one or two. We haven't done a poll. Mitch, we should do like a poll and rank it all. It's people or mountains. Yeah. And it's right in there. It's the mountains. And then we got seasons. Mm. Seasons is a, a, a short list, three. I do love Four Seasons. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm from Northwest Ohio, so we do have Four Seasons there. Yeah. But the mountains are my happy place. So in my work, I do a lot of supporting people. Yeah. And my recharge is I'm going to the mountains. And you live in the mountains in Carter County? You have 18 acres, I think you said. So when we moved here, I said to my husband, I have to be able to see a mountain, Mm -hmm. right? We're we're coming from the flatland. Mm -hmm. I've got to be able to see a mountain. I also want a garage. So if I can have a garage and I can see a mountain. When I open my garage? When I'm pulling out, I see the, the mountain, something and, and, like that. Or in most windows of my house, can okay. I see a mountain? <laughs> What's your husband's name? Mark. Mark. So Mark made this happen. He helped you guys. You found this dream we, property. We did it. Good for we did you. It. Yeah, yeah, the mountains are just awesome. They're a beautiful yeah. backdrop. And they are constantly changing. Like yeah. right now, they're greening up. They're yeah. waking up from their their winter slumber. Um, okay, so how did you make it down from the flatlands to Johnson City? So... Very big circuit of a route. Let's so, talk about it. Let's go. So, well, let's go. Natalie how Origin. How far back we want to go? Natalie Origin story. Where were you born? <laughs> so, so the psychologist is sitting on the couch, by the way. Um, so I was born in Boston, Ohio. How'd that make you feel? Northwest <laughs> Ohio. Great. It was great. Uh, so I'm a farm girl. Yeah. Grew up driving tractors and taking sheep and hogs to the fair, the whole scene. Nice. So I... Graduated high school, went to the Air Force Academy uh, for a brief stint, and then I transferred to Wheaton College. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a Christian liberal arts school. My friend Sam's going to go there. So Billy Graham, if we've ever heard of him, I've heard of Billy Graham. He's a pretty big name. Yep, went to Wheaton. Uh, Then I moved to Baytown, Texas. Okay. I was actually recruited, so I played volleyball for Wheaton. Okay. I was recruited by a teammate's mom, who was the principal of this little school. And she recruited all of her teachers through her kids' friends. Ah, smart. Yeah. She's a connector. Exactly. So moved to Baytown, Texas, met my husband, and then we moved to West Africa. Uh, Lived in... It's a logical next move. Right, right. (laughs) So we lived in Nigeria for a few years, working for a faith-based not-for-profit. That's cool. Yeah. We're teaching at an international school. I had a master's in counseling, and really, that was my entrance to, like, trauma, um, which is my my clinical expertise. So I was in a little over my head, mm-hmm. so needed more training. Came to Louisville, uh, got my Ph.D., and then the training director at the VA hospital here mm-hmm. promised that they would kick us out of our office at 4.30, and I was all done with all-nighters. That's why I came to Johnson City, Tennessee. So you could quit work at 4.30 yep. is why you're here. Yep. It's a long <laughs> way around that to realize that you want to be in your house looking at the mountains by, exactly. by 4.45, 5 o'clock. Exactly. I am out and I am <laughs> looking, at, looking the mountains. at my mountains. That's right. I like it. That's awesome. Now, do you have kids? I do. I've got two. A uh, 15-year-old daughter who just got her driver's permit. So watch out. So pray extra for me, please. Yeah. 
Well, uh, well, you did a lot of the driving. It yes. Was, and then good. I've got it's a nine, nine-year-old son. And so he'll be driving in a little while. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, um, yeah, that was a long way around. But maybe, so you said you had some training and then you went and got your PhD. And so earlier I said, oh, you must be a counselor of some sort. And you said, no, I'm a psychologist. So this would be a good, I guess, opportunity for us to learn the differences yeah. in the levels of care and credentialing, I guess, would be a That's good a great question. And I think the general public doesn't understand. Yeah. You know, you get on maybe psychology today or better help and you're picking a person. So the the tiers of training, um, you can get a master's degree mm -hmm. and you can become a licensed professional counselor, a licensed marriage and family therapist, a licensed clinical social worker, or you can get a doctorate. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you can get a doctorate in social work, um, but psychologists have a PhD or a PSYD. Um, so we are doctor, not MD doctor, but PhD, PhD doctor. My dad is a PhD yeah. doctor. Yep. Yeah. So our specialty is really in assessments. So personality assessments, IQ assessments, all of those fun tests that people love. We are the ones who build them figure out what we're trying to measure. Are we measuring that accurately? Mm -hmm. And then weave that into psychotherapy, basically. Gotcha. And then psychiatrists? One yeah, more? so psychiatry or you is... Got, you kind of are even, though, right? You're just no, a different... They're, they're MDs. Right. So they do, you know, medical training, that whole journey. Um, so they, therefore, can prescribe medications. There are some states where psychologists, PhD kind mm -hmm. of doctors can take more training and prescribe just that kind of medication. Mm -hmm. um, but but psychology and psychiatry often work in tandem okay. um, in treating people well. And I was talking to a friend earlier. His wife is an NP psychologist. Is that yes. Right? So nurse practitioner, mm -hmm. they can have a specialization in yeah. mental health, psychiatric nurse practitioners. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. So there, there are a lot of options there. And yeah, yeah I didn't. Thank you for sharing that because sure. I didn't know that because, I mean, you can also get training outside. Of, I mean, you can become a, a certified counselor, I think. Like there's different online trainings you can take. Yes. Um, yeah. And so that's, that's good too. So um, talk to us about the name, your, your higher place. Is that yeah. the name of your organization that you so run? So it's um, High Places Coaching and Consulting. High Places Coaching and Consulting. Yep. Consulting. One of my favorite books is Heinz Feet on High Places. I don't know this. By a woman named Hannah Hernard. Okay. And it's an allegory. So the main character, her name is Much Afraid. And along her <laughs> journey, right, to the high places, um, which in the allegory would be like heaven, the great shepherd... Um, is always available to her, but her companions are sorrow and suffering. Ooh. Right. Man, this is she's a conversation a lot. stopper. I know, I know. But when she gets to the top, um, her companions are, they become joy. And so it's this whole journey of life and these challenges along the way. And that's my goal for the people I'm supporting mm -hmm. is how do we get you to your highest place? Mm -hmm. So the summit of your mountain is where we want you to be. That's cool. Yeah. So highest places. And you can go to highestplaces.com? Your highestplace.com. Your highest yep. mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and get in touch with you there as well. Absolutely. So that's cool. How did you find yourself leaning towards psychology? Yeah, also circuitous. Um, I was a language arts, high school language arts teacher. That was my first career. And kids would just come and talk to me like after class. So I did a lot of coaching. We were teaching at a little, you know, private Christian school mm -hmm. where if you've done it once, you're qualified. So you do everything. <laughs> so I was directing the choir. I was doing yearbook, all this stuff. Sounds like problems. Yeah. So I had a lot of interaction mm -hmm. with kids and and so discipling kids and just being with them outside of the classroom. And they started asking me really hard questions and challenges and struggles. And I felt like I kind of like this maybe almost as much as the teaching. So went to get my master's, 
wanted to be equipped um, mm-hmm. for, you know, what I felt like. Taking good care of. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I got my master's. Um, then we moved overseas to Nigeria. Mm-hmm. And so I was doing some counseling there um, mm-hmm. with a master's degree, also teaching. So some of that was with other expatriates. Some of that was with kids, their families, nationals, the whole the whole thing. Probably a lot of trauma. and hurt. A lot of trauma. A lot of hurt there. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. And then so you decided, oh, yeah, I'm going to go a whole nother level. Yeah. So what did you I, do your PhD thesis on? Uh, so that was at University of Louisville. Okay. And my dissertation was on religious attribution. So when, so let's say, for example, I help, you know, a person cross the street mm-hmm. or, you know, they drop their groceries and I pick them up. Why do I do that? Because you want to look really good in front of the people that are looking outside. Exactly. So that's one option, okay. or, right? You feel or... compelled by something in you to yes. show compassion to someone and love them. Yes. Right. So my worldview. Or you don't want to be um, called a jerk. Exactly. I mean, there so, are all kinds of permutations exactly. there. Yeah. So me, my attribution, like, do I take credit for that? Do I do it because, you know, God has called me to serve people well in this way? Do I do it because there's social pressure? So that question um, was what I was trying to answer. Let us off the hook. Why did you do it? Why do you pick up the groceries? Well, it's pretty self-motivated. Is it? Mm -hmm, I have to say. Yeah, Yeah. usually it is, isn't it? And it actually depends. If I'm doing something good. Mm -hmm. Like coming on a podcast. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. I take the credit. I'll give you. If I do something not so good, Mm -hmm. right, then I blame that on something outside of me gotcha it's that id and ego it is dead. it all comes back to that see here we are can't get rid on of the couch it. yes <laughs> yes natalie's on a couch luckily i'm in a chair so i don't get psychoanalyzed um but there's a a bigger like a big part of your from what i've know of you is that you are an enneagram wizard this or you know everything there is to know about enneagram and as much as you can yeah know. And so tell us about how you got involved in the Enneagram studies and what, what you've learned there. And maybe get, we can talk about a brief overview of sure. it for our listeners, because it's really cool. It is. I love it. I use it in much of my work. Yeah. Um, so I met the tool almost 20 years ago. Rough so it's not season. anything new. It's been around for a it's long time. It's been around for hundreds of years, actually. It came to the U.S. in the 70s uh, via a Chilean psychiatrist. So the rest of the world has been using it a really long time. Hmm. So I was in a tough season, um, had my own psychologist um, doing some work. Sure. And he gave me this test. And I came back and he was going to brief me on the results. And he starts saying things about me. And I'm like, how do you know that? And I'm crying. I am, I am found out. Like he <laughs> put all the stuff. He's got all that secrets. <laughs> that I thought I was doing a really good job, kind of locking down. He he was telling me about myself. Mm-hmm. He hacked into your Alexa and he listened did. to you for like he, weeks and total just... hack. Yes. So all the Natalie secrets <laughs> were laying bare, uh, and I was like, "How did that happen?" Hey, buddy. So. Yeah. My husband and I did a two year spiritual direction journey um, with him and a community of people because I really wanted to learn more about this. Yeah. And it it just had this significant impact on me. It showed me my growth path. It showed me what's happening when I'm stressing. What do I do? It, it was a game changer. So I set it aside for a little bit mm-hmm. because psychology is not super interested in the tool. So I, I take some heat from can, my professional community. Which is odd, I think. You know, something yeah. that's been around for hundreds of years. Yeah. They, if it didn't work, they would just get rid of it. It comes down to the research base. So we have other personality tools that have just stacks and mounds of research support. Right. And we don't, we've got some, but not as much on this tool. But it works. Uh, I mean, that's what people will say. Like, this makes sense. What's the other personality one that everybody's, I'm a JKL, M-O-P. Myers-Briggs. That's the one. Mm-hmm. Is that the biggest one? And 
it in the is, industry? It is. And corporate, the corporate space loves that. Mm -hmm. um, disc is another popular yep. one that people use. Yeah, I like disc. Yeah. That's a good one. It's quick and easy, but I like the Enneagram because it gets a lot more detail. It does. It gets it, into feelings. Yes. Really nice. yeah. And your core motivation. Yeah. So the difference between the Enneagram, right? The disc is showing us, okay, here's a behavior sample, mm -hmm. right? We can... Here's how people are interacting. Here's how they're making decisions, right? The Ds are kind of sort of like the eights, you know, strong. Like a little and, driver, like, I need to make decisions quickly. Exactly. Yep. And then we've got the relationals, mm -hmm. you know, the conscientious, the S's you know. Or the house. Yep. Eyes. Yep. The ISC. That's exactly. <laughs> Carly's but, like, you can't spell anything. Um, yeah. And so. But the Enneagram is, it's, it's another level, right? Why do I respond like that? Mm -hmm. Why do I make decisions like mm -hmm. that? What, you know, ruffles my feathers versus what ruffles your feathers? It's the gas really behind. And it doesn't pin you in your uh, three with a wing something, right? Or whatever that is. You know, there's some, it's like, oh, you're not totally like in the disc, you're a D. And yes. you may have a little I, a little S or whatever. There's so a lot more nuance, right. I think. Because you've got your type. Right. You've got your wings, which I, you know, it's like your salt and your pepper. Um, Talk got, about, yeah, sorry, the wheel. How many different Enneagram types are there? So there are nine. Okay. Um, and and it looks like a circle. Um, it's not a pentagram, although some people think it looks like one. I'm not going to say anything. It does look a little, yeah. but yeah. So, so it and the lines serve a purpose, right? right? So there are nine different personality types, mm -hmm. ways of being, ways of interacting with the world. Mm -hmm. um, and and then the lines show you, hey, what happens to me when I'm stressed? Or what's the number that I need when I'm in stress mm. that I can access and scoop from? Yeah. So the reason I like it, it's super flexible. You can ask a ton of questions. It's a development tool. Mm -hmm. So we're not using it to diagnose anything. We're not using it to label um some people are like this puts me in a box and we no, say it just puts a number on you it it actually shows you the box <laughs> you're in so you can get out of your box right. uh, can you change like, your number no so you're in a box you are driving your life bus from a certain number is how i like to say it <laughs> you're just set at a certain speed you're at a three speed you got a three speed you got a nine speed yeah I, or sometimes I'll say it's like your baseball team, right? Okay. So, so I've got these nine players um, sort of inside of me, and they're all getting a different amount of playing time, right? Would be another way of thinking about it. I got it. Because we have all nine of them in there. Yes. So we all have but all we, nine. But we've got the go-to. We're driving from one. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And I know you're like, I don't like to label people, but you probably walk around... Being an expert at it, you're like, hey, this person, I want to talk to him for a minute or two. And you're like, you're a two and you're a six and you're a four. And is that we're how not, it kind of goes a little bit? We're not supposed to do that. You're so I'm an Enneagram to, one. Like, I'd be breaking my own hey, rule. Hey, it's just between you and I right here. <laughs> right. Where there's nobody else listening. You can tell me. So have you figured me out in our little interaction? So I have hypotheses. Let's, do you want them? I would love it. And okay. I'll start crying too if you want. <laughs> So I, what I know about you is you're a successful businessman in your own right. Thank you. Um, we'll see. And, and so, right, success is, would read three-ish to me, right? right? Again, that's a little bit limited. Um, we've also broached a couple of sort of deep, you know, like trauma or painful kind of things. Mm -hmm. And so there might be a little seven uh, in there. Like, what my, let's, let's just have a good time and talk about JC. No, I think. Let's like, not talk about that trauma stuff. Yeah, let's just, <laughs> let's just stick with the three. Because so, that's, yeah, when I, I, I'm trying to remember back. I need to go to my, my um, stuff and figure it out. But yeah, I think I'm a three. And I know, um, yeah, it, it's funny how you just, it, like it starts talking about you and you're like, yes, but well, I don't feel myself as a sick, like, thank you for saying yeah. that. But you look at yourself in a different lens than other people see, mm -hmm. right? And so you don't see yourself as a successful business person. You're just like, I'm just going out every day. Well, to. but you also have a lot going on, right? So, I mean, you do the podcast, you have your other company and threes. I mean, they hit the ground running. They wake up in the morning, they eat goals for breakfast and they are 
Moving, 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 moving. What's the what's the one? There's somebody because the one also is a is it the achiever? What's the so the, it's the good right person? Okay, um, the reformer. The reformer. That's okay. my style. Gotcha. Yep. And ones and threes are actually a high powered team. Okay. Because the three is like, hey, here's all the stuff we're gonna knock out today, and then the one brings that. Okay, let's put some polish on that. Let's, you know, get that really dialed in. Right, nice be like, speed. Mitch, is that done yet? You know, kind of thing. And the one comes along and be like, Mitch, if you do this, it's going to really help you grow. And yeah. That kind of thing. Put a good but spin on it. But sometimes the one can get stuck in perfecting. Right. And so the three is like, hey, let's move on, right? We've so got, good that's balance. good enough. Yeah. They offset each other a little bit. And it's true for lots of numbers. You can, you know, align them for you know, high productivity, hmm. get a good team constellation. That's a good rolling. idea. Yeah, yeah. I need to look at that. We should do that as a team now. I'm thinking about it. Carly and I have done it and it was very helpful. Yeah. And it helped us relate a little bit better. Tell me how you would, so let's say, where's a good place to go and take the test mm -hmm. for listeners? On, okay. Um, where, would, where would you say go first? There's two that I like. Uh, so the first one is WEPS. Um, W-E-P-P-S dot com. Okay. That was built by a psychologist. Uh, there is a price point attached. It's $15. But you get, like, the percent of every number that you have. Mm -hmm. And then it shows you how much is it helping you, mm -hmm. how much is it holding you back. Gotcha. So you get a lot of good information. And it's one of those you get what you pay for kind of thing. Exactly. It's free. It's, you know. Yeah, there are free ones. There are free ones. Um, I've taken I, a couple of the free ones. I prefer the WEPS. Mm -hmm. The other one that I love is called the Integrative and then the number nine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a company based in South Africa. And I can actually generate a couple's report or a team report. So like if I'm working with a team, they all take it individually. Mm -hmm. Then I can generate a team report. And interestingly, the team number may not be reflected by anyone on that team. Hmm. So there's an algorithm that's really cool. That's um, cool. He's a five. Actually, both of the, the men who built those tests are Enneagram fives. Okay, what is, is a five? a very expert, wise, like, Brainy that's who X, you want building super it. Super sharp person. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. So, um, yeah, so that's fun. Like, you've got a team. You know, maybe the team is a five. Mm -hmm. But... It's just, you know, the reflection of all those people, even if we don't have a five on the team. Right. You add yeah. them up and you get like a 50 and you're like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're like, something no, like that. <laughs> no, no, that's not how it works. And then you can say, okay, here's what we're maybe a part where, like you were saying, the one comes along the three and yeah. you can say, okay, we're missing a seven and we right. need a seven. Or let's say we had a three team, mm -hmm. right? Like successful, achieving, right? Like we're winning. Threes right. can be competitive. I don't know if that resonates I like with to you. Compete a little bit. Mm -hmm. So if your team is a three, maybe we have like maybe we do have a five on the team, mm -hmm. and they don't care about winning. They just want a good strategy. They want a good plan. They want to know that we maybe have a backup plan, mm -hmm. right? When we're eating our goals for breakfast. Mm -hmm. So it really helps the team have these conversations around how do we include everyone in making this decision yeah. or how how do we make sure everyone on this team is functioning from their strength and yeah. contribution and feel like they're is that the includer person yes yeah okay so i like teaching gallup strengths mm -hmm. with the enneagram mm -hmm. it's a really it's a great yeah. combination my wife carly she's a great includer she's always like you need to get these exactly um, and then it, who's the person on the team? Like what number is like, oh, I really want our t-shirts to be super cool looking and design the, four. the, the fours more. They are creative. Okay. They're tuned into aesthetic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got to be meaningful. So there's, there's a depth to the yep. four. Uh, they're not afraid of emotional pain. I mean, they can do theirs. They can do yours. They can do all of ours. Gotcha. But it's, it's got to be significant okay. or they don't want anything to do with it. Okay. So it's got to have significance. Yes. And then, but, and, and aesthetically pretty, please. And be too. beautiful. And be creative. Beautiful, creative. Mm -hmm. What's on the other side? Cause it feels like we're talking on the right side of the circle. Yeah. What's the left side? Like so seven, eights, nines. Yeah. So you've got, um, five, six, seven mm -hmm. are your thinkers. Okay. And as much as the four has that capacity to hold emotion, mm -hmm. seven has the least. Okay. They don't want to be sad. They don't want to be bored. And they just want to move on to the next thing, next thing, next thing. Okay. Right. Uh, then at the top, you've got eight, nine, one. 
those are your instinct. We call them the gut body, right? Like we even talk about that. Like mm-hmm. I just felt it in my gut. Yeah. Very instinctual kinds yeah. of people. Eights are world changers, strong, powerful challengers. We're doing this thing. Mm-hmm. Nines are your harmonizers, mediators. They're lovely in helping a team get consensus. That's right. Yeah. Right. They see everyone's perspective. Right. And then you've got the one who's the, we're going to do this right. We're going to, we're going to cross our T's, dot our I's, follow the policies and procedures. They're the things. attorneys of the world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we got to have it perfect. And this is why. Um, that's cool. So who, how did you get introduced to the Enneagram? So I was working with a psychologist uh-huh. um, and had my whole like, whoo. I've been found out a uh, moment and realized this is, this is cool. It's That's powerful. Right. You told me about it's that. It's very right. powerful. Yeah. Um, and even in, in my marriage, I mean, understanding my husband's type and relating to him, my kids, I, I think I know uh, at least. You're working on it? Yeah. Because when do you fully develop your personality like that? I mean, so not some people say by age five, four, I it's kind of. I mean, a pretty good sense, it's right? Locked even. In. Yeah. Even when our kids are little, right? right. More ext- introverted, extroverted. But personality isn't fully online until late teen, early okay. 20s. It lives a little bit in the prefrontal cortex, which is the last part of the brain to develop. Um, and I, I have a pastor friend who says that we, boys' brains don't fully develop till we're 28. So don't make any decisions that are like hard and fast. All parents need to know this about this their is kids, so right? True. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. We yeah. like well, lots of decisions before we're yeah. 28. The interesting thing about personality, we we used to think or or say, right, nature, nurture, right? Mm-hmm. It's about 50-50. Mm-hmm. So we arrive on the scene with our personality hardwired. Mm-hmm. And then our families, what happens to us in our life, that nurture component has about half the impact. But actually, research in the last 10 to 15 years says, you know what? Nurture has more influence than like our base hardware. Give me a percentage. 60, 40. 60, 40. Mm-hmm. Okay. So your genetic predisposition is 40%. Yeah. And which it seems still like a lot, right? I mean, you're a little baby. You're it coming is. out. You're like, yep. but you're like already like, oh, I'm a little baby that's going to say, hey, I want this or that. Yeah. Or yeah. You've got a personality already. And in, then our, our families. In and then your family. Yeah. Our systems either, you know, some some of that is embracing that mm-hmm. type, right? Maybe there's rules mm-hmm. in family systems that, you know, inhibit mm-hmm. parts of who we are. I mean, all of those things. And then enter trauma or hard things that people go through and the impact that that has on their personality. So, Which can be drastic. It can be. I mean. Sometimes I get the question, does your number ever change? And I would say that's the only time. Mm. Right. So so for people who have, you know, these really horrible things that have happened to them, it's like their their truest self has had to go into hiding, got lost. And as they do the work and as they come through all of that trauma impact and account for the whole story, now we get to see the incredible true person uh that's that's beautiful work yeah and you just lit up while you're yeah. talking about that because yeah. that's what you love I'm to thinking do. i'm thinking of of amazing people who have courageously taken that jersey yeah that journey. so if you're listening and you're thinking hey i feel like i'm hiding my yeah. true self you'd be a good person to reach out to yes yeah mm-hmm. talk about that process like what was what does that look like somebody engages with you sure and go through the process i mean obviously it's not a you don't have like a hey color in this and do this and two weeks later you're all fixed right yeah it's not like that but no and i so i'm i'm a trained psychologist Mm -hmm. and i can do psychotherapy i'm also a trained coach and those are two kind of different things right so it depends on what people are working on and i think very like hand in glove they do yeah yeah so i'm always pulling from my clinical expertise Mm -hmm. even in my coaching right which is we're starting here and we're going forward or you're coaching to help hey you've got to do these exercises this week to get you down the road and we want to get you down the road you want to get down the road don't you yes exactly and i think if i can also help people recognize what 
debris Mm -hmm. of life is getting in their way, right? And and so I've got a sense of how that shows up. And so if we're doing the therapy side, um, I do an intensive. So people come, I don't do the like weekly one hour. We actually meet for three to four hours a day for several days. Cause we're going to, we're going to knock it we're out. We're getting into it. That's, that's my approach. We're going to get into it. Yeah. Okay. On the therapy side, on the coaching side, right? we can do a similar kind of thing. Yeah. Um, or I do traditional coaching. Some people want to meet monthly. Some people want to meet twice a month. We might do, you know, an extended kind of thing to like really take a deep dive, debrief their assessments. And then what are your goals? Where do you want to be six months from now? Where do you want to be a year from now? Let's go. I like it. We're doing it. Yeah. Which is, I think, in my business coaching world brain, I'm going, that's interesting to think about, like, emotionally, where do you want to go, mm-hmm. right? Like, that's a that's a cool concept that I hadn't thought So of. what I say, because uh, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs mm-hmm. and intrapreneurs, I'm the person for your inner business. Mm. Right. So there's all the things that you're doing. Mm -hmm. We can actually maximize that performance by taking a look on the inner business. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's fun. Um, What else do you offer besides some of that, like coaching and so therapy? Mm -hmm. Anything else that you offer? I know you. So I do a lot of workshops and trainings, Mm -hmm. right? So organizations or teams will bring me in. I just did one this morning, uh, a three hour. Enneagram for leadership um, oh, nice. training. This is for the Tennessee prevention, um, drug prevention. So I have people from all over the state of Tennessee learning about their Enneagram. It was That's super cool. fun. And they're probably like, I've never even heard of this. It was it was great. Yeah. It was great. They did awesome. Great question. So insightful. Um, so you can bring me in to do those kinds of things. Some teams like to do their workshop and then we might do like quarterly team coaching Mm -hmm. so i may come back in you know q1 q2 how are we doing what have you all learned they've had a chance to kind of put things into practice Mm -hmm. and then i check in with them so that's an option uh i'm launching actually in august a women in business and leadership closed group coaching cohort that's cool. Yeah. So we're going to use the Enneagram and Gallup Strengths, mm-hmm. and it's it's limited to 10 people so okay. that everyone has a meaningful experience. So you better get online and That's sign, right. connect with there Natalie now for that. a few seats left, okay. um, but we're going to meet monthly. And, and so there's, I'll share a content piece, and then we'll do different breakouts, but each woman is building out her own leader identity. That That's the goal. That's cool. Yeah. That'll be fun. Hopefully you get a lot of neat work done there. Help a lot of people. Um, what are some of the hard things that you've had to deal with being a, because you're kind of an entrepreneur yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, what are some of the hard things you've had to deal with in your your business? So my Enneagram One gets in my way. Like, Tell us more about that. Okay. <laughs> so as a solopreneur, uh-huh. I... I have a really high standard. Okay. And I don't delegate well. Yes. So I fall into the trap of, right? I'm raising my hand. Doing it all myself. Mm. So I do my own marketing materials. I've learned Canva. I've learned Camtasia to do my video editing. I've learned WordPress. I don't even know what that is. Uh, So I can do Elementor Pro um, and do my own website. There you go. Because, but I... I need to be outsourcing more. So I have this You're stealing year. other people's joy is what you're doing. Yes, like exactly. Mitch, I mean, he's over here doing the podcast. He's loving it. Look at him. <laughs> I mean, he's having a blast. He's surfing YouTube right now, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> or the graphic designer, you know, so it takes, yes. for me, so I used to be like that a lot, but I'm like, no, it's not worth yeah. the time. And um stealing somebody else's joy. You know? So I'm getting there. I've I've outsourced web stuff um, this year. Good I've job. outsourced, thank you, some of my digital content. Yeah. Uh, and that's been great. Like, I I cannot do everything. So that's that's a challenge. I have to sing the Frozen song sometimes to myself. Just let that's it go. That's a good Enneagram 1 song. Let it go. Yeah. Let it go. Maybe it's an Enneagram 3 song. I, I think it is. I about that. I think it is. Let's say somebody is listening and they're like, 
this sounds like a really cool job that you've got because yeah. they love people. And what would be some advice to someone who you're thinking, um, well, I've got two questions on advice, but remind me to come back to the sure. advice. So what would be some advice you'd give to someone who's thinking about getting in, get, becoming a psychologist? Mm -hmm. Because this you did so a funny. little long route about it. I did. I did. It found me. Right. Um, I actually, a friend of a friend is contemplating a career change. And I just met with her yesterday because she's considering this whole thing. So mm -hmm. this, is, this is in my mind. What I love about psychologists is the flexibility. So I started my training thinking I want to stay on the clinical path, right? Like there's trauma everywhere. Mm -hmm. I want to help people with this. And then in one of my jobs, I, I realized, wait a minute, people are being really negatively impacted at work. Mm. And, you know, in some leadership dynamic situations, some team dynamic situations. So I thought, what if I go upstream? How can I support these people? And actually, I'm still using all of my clinical training, mm -hmm. it's just in a different way mm -hmm. and with different language. Yeah. So I think what I love is the flexibility. Gotcha. And I didn't even realize that when I, when I got into the field right. that I could do all these fun things. And I think, yeah, we continue to uh, grow and adapt and like learn about our, our job and like how it moves and changes too, because we're changing and yeah. our skills are growing and we're like, oh, well, I used to love doing that, but now I love watching other people do that and helping yes. them do that. And um, it's just a lot of fun. Going to go back to, you said you were counseling school students. Uh -huh. And so I have a, Carly and I have a graduating senior, Christian. And um, what would be some advice you give to high schoolers who are graduating today, going into college or wherever they're going? Like mm. right now it's graduation. There are tons yeah. of kids graduating. Yeah. How would you help them navigate like the future? So if, I if you have five minutes with us. I think because of the prefrontal cortex stuff we talked about before. We're not, a de we're not fully there. Yeah. I'm and, hoping my and we, finishes up someday. We, we're not even thinking about like the consequences or the implications or the longevity it's not there. of the decision. Right. So, in a sense, it's almost unfair that we ask kids to dial in what they want to do forever. I mean, how many grown ups, right, and have had career changes. I'm not doing what I started out. Though. Exactly. Uh, same, right? I was right. a high school language arts teacher. And you were going to be a pro volleyball player. So there you go. That, that was also in my, in my, in the car. I want to be a pro tennis player and a stockbroker. I'm not either one. There you go. Sorry. So something I love actually that the UK does when we lived in West Africa, we had a lot of students coming from the UK mm -hmm. on their gap year. And I was like, this is brilliant. The gap so year. yes. So they're, they would shadow at the hospital or they would, you know, all these different things that mm -hmm. were happening and they can start to determine, hey, I kind of love this or I never thought about this or maybe I hate this. That's just as good information. Like, let's right. oh, come to that realization. Yes. And, you know, how many teachers get to their student teaching in their junior, senior year? And I think they've changed that actually. And they do classroom exposure earlier yeah. earlier but yeah i would say not to lock in too quickly gotcha. you know stay open if you can take a variety of things do that mm -hmm. i think the other thing is shadowing experiences so follow people around like ask can i like hang out with you for a day because what really happens in that career and job does not always translate in the coursework right. objectives. Yes. Agreed. I think That's people want to shadow me some kids. <laughs> and I'm like, you sure? That's like, it's not as glamorous as it looks like <laughs> yeah, on exactly. HGTV, people selling houses. It's Let me show you these Excel spreadsheets right. when I'm doing my accounting. <laughs> Here's what, you grab a phone, you're going to make a bunch of calls. That's yep. what I do every day. Just talk yep. to people and how do we help them? Well, so what I got out of that is just tell all of our kids to take a gap year. Just, you know, go surfing somewhere. My kids are going to take a gap year. I liked it. Yep. I've already signed my kid up for school. Sorry. It's not too late. <laughs> I don't think so. Christian, don't listen to this one. This is Talk to the registrar. <laughs> <laughs>
Ah, no, we're so proud of him. He's in the honors college, I think. And they, it's the, the funny thing is the dean standing up there and he's like, hey, saying the same thing. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You think you're going to do this right now? Yep. 2.8 major change, or you change your major 2.8 times on average. He goes, I changed mine like five times. And yeah. this is the dean of the honors college. We're like, okay, I got you. I got you. Yep. Um, what's some, how do you continue to grow and stay inspired in your, in your field? What, mm -hmm. what are you doing to connect with other people? So I have my own coach, oh, good. um, because I think it's important, yeah. you know, if I'm doing the work that I'm having someone. You got to practice what you preach kind of deal. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I'm in a, um, business coaching group mm -hmm. also, which is super fun. Because lots of other industries are represented. And so if I have an opportunity challenge, I get to hear from, you know, the manufacturing space mm -hmm. or the marketing space. And they've got a whole new take on things, right. which is fabulous. Yeah. And then they're looking at you going, what do you think about this? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so very, really synergistic. Yeah. Love that. Um, I I buy more books than I actually read. Same. But I I've got a stack on my nightstand. I've got a stack. Um I've been really trying to do a morning routine where I'm, you know, doing, you know, more of my devotional Bible time. Mm -hmm. Then I'll shift to, you know, just something not even in my industry, right? I try to read outside of my mm -hmm. industry, um, for the same reasons that I'm in that business coaching sure. group. As I different it's perspectives. Just, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. What are some um Give us like some little tips on healthy rhythms for us as individuals to, you know, like I'm with you. I, I do a little Bible study every morning to get yeah. in the word and really just talk to our creator because mm -hmm. I think he's in control. But um, what would be some tips and tricks for our, our listening audience for self-care? How do you take care of yourself before you go out into the world or even while you're in, maybe you're in a tough situation at your yeah. job or what would be some tricks? And, yeah, several things come to mind. I mean, back to the mountains, that's honestly where I recharge. So um, sometimes I've, I've got certain songs that I'll listen to. I really love trail running. I'm not going to tell you my trail because I don't want the word to get out. It's a hidden trail. <laughs> um, if you become part of the 10-person inner circle of <laughs> Natalie, she'll let that that's out. Right. That's we, right. We can go together. Um I've got, I'm actually really introverted and I need a lot of solitude. Okay. And there's just something for me about being in nature, moving my body all at the same time yeah. that helps me decompress. Um, the other interesting thing is our nutrition. I know I'm kind of throwing this in here, but there's a whole field of nutritional psychology. I have a certificate in that and nutritional psychiatry. Um, and, and we're eating in a way that helps with sadness or anxiety, right? And so dialing in your nutrition not only has physical impact, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of mental health mm -hmm. impact. That's huge. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to have to quit eating cheddar rounds. Is that what you're saying? From not totally. Not, Otherwise, but they bring you great joy. It's okay to eat maybe. So that's a part of your rhythm, a, a cheddar round. <laughs> I eat them. I don't know when the last time I had cheddar rounds was, but I do love them. Pals fries are fantastic. Mm -hmm. I just love pals, but it's maybe a once a week kind of thing. There so. you go. That's how you wear them. It's a it's right. just weekly. Lattes I do yeah. like, but that may be adding to sadness or that's, um, yeah. Um, what's something that I didn't ask you about that you'd like to share? Anything? Mm -hmm. Um... I could not do what I do without my husband. So big shout out to Mark. Yep. Yep. Yeah. A lot of hours, uh, a lot of behind the scenes, and he... Do you have a career too? Yeah. He's a math teacher at Science Hill. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. That's fun. So a lot of the shuttling, a lot of the kids' mm -hmm. stuff uh, really, really falls on him. Gotcha. But, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sure he appreciates that mm -hmm. for sure. Um, anything, let's say somebody's listening and they're hurting, what would you, I mean, just, what would you tell them? Because I feel don't, like. Yeah. Don't do it by yourself. That yeah. was the other thing when we were talking about rhythms, I, it, it's so easy to just get inward focused and self-focused mm -hmm. and, you know, social media doesn't count and texting doesn't count. We need 
face-to-face, -face present, being with uh, another person. Yeah. And, and so I just want to say, don't, don't navigate that stuff by yourself. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for coming Absolutely. on the podcast. Um, I think what you do is just very helpful to people. And, and, and the older I get, the more I see people. And I have a thing in my head that I always say to myself, if somebody's acting out or wrongly, I'm like, well, who hurt them to where they want, you know, hurt people, hurt people is yes. kind of what I come back to all the time. And so it'd be awesome if we could heal the world to where people aren't hurting, you know, and mm -hmm. get rid of the trauma. Like, and I don't know how you start that. Like, that would be something amazing. But um, yeah, I'm just very hopeful for mm -hmm. what you're doing and what you do in our area because you're, you're changing one individual at a time that's impacting our whole our community and that's another reason that's so awesome and people love to move here and so that's my hope i mean if if you know we have one healthier person mm -hmm. um then their relationships get healthier and their kids are healthier exactly. and then they're perpetuating more and more health around the area. i didn't answer um another thing i i was just remembering you asked about how do we do this right like what's the what's the process and you just get started mm. um and the first sort of phase um, that I tell people is we're going to honor your story. Mm. We're going to honor where you've been, how you got here. Uh, and there's some really cool stuff about that. There's some really yuck out stuff about that. And so my work sometimes, honestly, is I'm, I'm bearing witness mm -hmm. to the honoring of how this beautiful person got here. Yeah, and short-term pain to go back to those experiences that are done. They're not, yep. I mean, that, it's a memory right now, uh -huh. right? It's not, but we live it out like it's going to hurt us again if we bring it up, you yeah. know? And so short-term pain versus long-term health is. Exactly. Is, a, is just probably the thing you got to jump through. Yeah. And then, yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank I you. Enjoyed. How do our listeners connect with you? Uh, so the best way is yourhighestplace.com. Okay. Uh, there's a contact form right on the website mm -hmm. that comes straight to me. Uh, I would also encourage people to sign up for my newsletter. Mm -hmm. That's at the bottom of the homepage. And so if I'm doing workshops, if I'm doing public events, I try to post those. I also have tips, Enneagram stuff uh, yeah. that, that might be helpful in the newsletter. That's cool. And then um, what gets you just fired up? Like, oh, let's go. Can I say mountains again? It is me with my headphones yeah. and my trail shoes yeah. and Chewy, my dog. Uh -huh. And we are going to my trail and I have an open block of time. I know that sounds no. crazy because hey. I'm an introvert and I'm like, oh. I'm married to an introvert. Getting by I myself yeah. is really yeah. exciting. Yeah. No, I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Thanks for just what all you do and thank you and um, i hope you guys learned a lot about natalie and her her um her business and i just pray that you connect with her if you feel like you really need it and if you um want to move to east tennessee if you're not in our area or if you want to move around east tennessee call me we're looking to help a lot of people this year we're growing our team if you want to get into real estate call me i'd love to do that too we also do a lot of property management so mm. if you're interested in investing in real estate we would love to help you do that and we'll take care of it from start to finish so thanks awesome. again for listening have a great day and we'll talk to you soon